All right. And here we are. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. It's, it's going to be just me today. Totally fine. Also, I love that we're in the same, you know, the same Listen, set. I'm just trying to be like you and I grow up. I was like, let me look, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. <laughs> um, well, I'm trying to be like you, which is why I am super excited that we're here today. Um, so, what do you say that we just get started? Jump right in? I, uh, I'm here to serve, so you let me know how you want to run it, and I'll follow your, follow your lead. Sounds good. Before we get started, can everyone listening hear us both okay? Give us a heart if you can hear us. Kiana says she thinks we're all Oh, good. Kiana, what's up, girl? If it wasn't for you, none of this uh, would be possible. So thank you. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to take silence as agreement that I'm all here. So, um, welcome again, everybody, our first of four sessions in a brand new series that we are as part of February intended to help increase literacy, um, particularly in color. Um, we've partnered with Crypto this four-part series. Um, we'll be here every Friday on live to bring you exciting and new information. Um, so I'll let our herself and Justice but I am. My name is Yolanda and I'm a co-founder here at Your Tone. Really excited to get started. So let's uh, right to start off, uh, introductions probably make the most sense. Can you tell everyone who you are, where you're from, um, and then maybe like what you do? And I'm sorry, you cut out. What was the last thing you said? What do uh, I do? What What do you do? And a fun fact about this. Not this. Okay, well, I, I first of all, I've been on like calls all day long, so Forgive me if I'm out of breath. I literally like just got off one call. It was like three minutes um, to showtime. And I was like, <sighs> okay. Um, thank you so much for, for having uh, us at Crypto Tutors to participate in this conversation around financial empowerment, financial literacy, which I think is so vital to the, the communities of color and historically marginalized communities that have been um, excluded from participating in a lot of wealth building practices. And that ranges, and I'm sure we'll go into more detail around that from, you know, redlining and um, predatory lending practices and, and so on. But I am Lisa Brancourt, Trump girl for all my Haitians out there. And um, I am one third of Crypto Tutors. And uh, I am, you know, one of the co-founders. We, we launched officially, <sighs> Johanna, we officially launched January 19th, or yes, January 19th of this year, 2021. And it has been a whirlwind. Um, this idea of creating um, an educational platform for folks to understand crypto in the most simplistic of, you know, processes, the most simplistic of ways. I think that the challenge with cryptocurrency, and I experienced it myself, was I didn't feel as though I was sophisticated enough mm. to participate. And I didn't feel as though I, you know, could play in that, swim in those waters. And so to answer your question, I'm sorry, let me explain who I am and, and what I'm about and all that good stuff. So I'm Lisa Francoeur, and uh, I am also the founder of an organization called Fancified, and that's, you know, an empowerment organization. And I did, you know, motivational talks all over the world, and I work with corporations, and I do professional development and training. And I have a vision of scaling empowerment globally. And that's actually the, one of the reasons how Crypto Tutors came, came to pass. My best friend and uh, our other business partner, we all share the, the desire to want to contribute to the world from an empowerment standpoint. And, and we can delve deeper into that. But in a nutshell, um, that's who I am. And um, I would like to wear fat gold chains a lot. And I started my career as a fashion stylist. And as you can see, I have a stop, you know, you know, just flexing, you know, get flexing and popping off like that. <laughs> I'm here for it. 
Um, really quickly, it, I think it's a little choppy. Can you hear me okay? Your audio is cutting in and out. Oh, okay. Can you hear me okay, though? I can hear you okay now, but earlier it was cutting out for me as well. Um, how about now? Are we good? I feel, I hear you good now. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, so you started talking about it a little bit. You're now a crypto communist, which is really exciting. But how did you get started in crypto? Because as I mentioned, like a little bit of a scary thing to get. How did I get started in crypto? Okay, so well, I'm I'm still like relatively new, and I think it's important to to call that out because you know this journey, you know, is something that I will be on for the for the rest of my life. Like I can't imagine not being um, you know, interested and, and curious and, you know, vested literally and, 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 uh, figuratively. So my journey in crypto began when, you know, my business partners and I, we got together for a meeting of the minds and, you know, we got together because we were thinking about empowerment and we were thinking about, okay, well, what are the, what does that mean? Empowerment. And as I said earlier, I have a vision of scaling empowerment globally and, my other business partner, you know, he, Moedi Nubi, um, who you'll eventually meet, he is all about financial empowerment. And, you know, Nina, who you already met, you know, she is just a master connector and she knows how to bring folks together that are of like minds. And when we started to talk about what empowerment meant and practical applications, you know, it, it, inspired us to um, start investigating, you know, ways for us to get involved in crypto. And Moedi has been in the industry since its inception. And, you know, he was telling us about, like, how he's been able to navigate and the impact that it's had on him and his family and communities where he's been able to share that, that messaging. And Nina and I were like, bet it up, say less. So, you know, we were very modest in, in us dipping our toe in the water and over the past, you know, eight months or so, we've been um, continuing to be, you know, more aggressive and more aggressive and codifying our learnings. Awesome. So you've done an incredible thing, your passion, your personal belief, um, and turning into a brand new business, so tutors. For those who are here, can you tell us a little bit about your own? Okay, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. You no, were out. Uh, it sounds like it's on me. Can me a little bit better now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, so I was just saying you guys have done an incredible job of taking your passions um, and turning them into this lovely business. Can you tell everyone a little bit about it um, and what you do? Yes. So first, I think it's important. We're a very like mission um, driven organization. And I, I touched upon it earlier. And I'm going to circle back to it because I think it's extremely important to understand the motivation behind why we do what we do and how we're doing what we're doing. Um, for starters, our mission statement is to simplify cryptocurrency, um, you know, to, to simplify cryptocurrency, close the knowledge gap to empower and enable folks to transform knowledge into wealth. And I think that there are a lot of, you know, uh, there are a lot of people trying to teach, but the process of teaching, like what's the next step? How do you take your learnings and, and apply those learnings in a way that lends itself to seeing results that will motivate you to be more curious, to motivate you to want to even socialize what you're learning with your community, to, to wanting to uh, read and, and research and really, you know, develop an entirely new um, domain of expertise. That's what we're, that's what we're about. So fundamentally at our core, that is what we do and, and, and how we do it. This is where I think um, is unique. Each of us has unique, you know, skills within, within our organization. You know, Moetti is as like the, the, the architect, you know, he drafts the blueprints from an educational standpoint. He's very much about how do we create programs and curriculums and manage our, our tutors um, and keep them up to snuff and, and ensure that their certification is like on par. You know, Nina is, a, you know, they're all geniuses. So, so let me like make sure that that's clear. You know, Nina is an operational beast. I've never met anyone who has the ability to take an idea 
and 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 you know bring the idea to to fruition in so in, in such a creative and like fun way um, and I say that because when you talk about the how for crypto tutors, you know, when we roll out our e-learning program, for instance, what we did was not just have, you know, fancy, not just have me, you know, Lisa um, facilitating. And yes, I'm wearing fat gold chains in a course and we're keeping it 100 and we're letting mofos know that like, we're not trying to be Mark Zuckerberg or any of the other white dudes, quite honestly, yeah. Asian dudes out there that are running the space. It's like, we're keeping it authentic to who we are and representing for the culture. And so in addition to being, you know, and approaching it from that perspective, um, we also incorporate illustrations and animations to not only provide, uh, you know, to vocalize the education, but to, to illustrate it so that people can visualize. And that combination is super beneficial when it comes to a comprehension and retention standpoint. And then we have the edutainment aspect of the business edutainment in that it's a hybrid of education and entertainment and like we have a show that we're uh producing right now called crypto couch please subscribe to our youtube channel crypto tutors and you'll see what i'm talking about um and and you'll get some really great knowledge from subject matter experts johanna who we have sit on a crypto couch and you know talk that talk it's like what industry you know direction is the industry moving in what do we need to be aware of um, what's happening in the metaverse, for instance, and we really want to, to not just provide access to a formal education, but also pre bridge that gap to, to um, industry leaders and thought leaders so they know who's in the industry that looks like them that's also leading the industry and blazing trails. So that combination is, I think, what makes us unique and what makes us interesting and um, what's going to make us a trillion dollar entity. <laughs> we love to see it. Um, and it's really important because this is a super um, scary process when you're completely unfamiliar and you're trying to get to um, a place where you're comfortable enough to make that first purchase. Um, so what we would love to do is hear a little bit about like, the typical fears that come up when you're first introducing to people to crypto um, and like whether or not you're a lot of friends within that, uh, in our community? It is scary. <laughs> like, I'm not even going to pretend like it's not. It is, you know, and like, truth be told, it's so important to have the right community. And I think that's another thing, you know, um, gosh, not to be like, like harping on crypto tutors is like the most amazing, but you know, community, right? Like this conversation came you know, as a result of community. And that is something that I feel like is just so important in, in your life's experience. And when it comes to, you know, whether or not it's intimidating, hell yeah, it's heaven yeah. Cause we're not, we're not talking about hell over here. We always talk about heaven, okay? You don't talk about just heaven, okay. So heaven, yes, it's intimidating. But I would say that um, the things that you do not, um, that you don't do on a regular basis or things that you haven't done any, it's, it's, of course, it's going to be intimidating because you've never done it. And even as you continue to do it, when you talk about money, it's like, like, there's a lot at stake. And that's why, one, you never want to invest what you can't afford to lose. Right. You know, that is, you know, golden, you know, rule of thumb. And secondly, I would say that it's important to, to do your homework and your due diligence. Like, don't just hear the news and be like that you know i'm gonna just um you know because i read this article or i heard this i read this tweet or i saw this video or what have you base the decision of where you're investing solely on that and there's a cryptocurrency called um do is it the dogecoin or dogecoin Do dogecoin um you know and it's what you call an alt coin meaning anything outside of you know bitcoin is their alt coins alternative coins there's another name for it. I don't know if we can say this on this program. Shit coins, you didn't hear it from me, but that's what they said. <laughs> um, but Elon Musk tweeted, you know, like Dogecoin, and all of a sudden it shot the price up, and people like losing their minds, you know, buying it, buying it, buying it, and it was a joke. And, you know, the fundamentals, again, when it comes to the intimidation factor, you won't be as intimidated if you feel as though you're making an educated decision, if you're, if you're taking a calculated risk. I want to underscore calculated because it's going to hopefully inspire your 
community to to do their homework and with that i feel like it starts to allay a bit of your concerns around the investment not to say that you couldn't lose it which is again bringing me back to my original point don't invest which you cannot afford to lose because it's a, there's a risk involved did that answer your question <laughs> yeah for sure um and you kind of brought an interesting point up which is that there are a ton of myths around cryptocurrency um and like what it's used for where the value stems from all of that stuff the safety of investing in cryptocurrency as well what are some of the myths that you hear the most frequently um especially lately i'm super curious about that <clears throat> the myths the myths mhm mm gosh um well Okay, so so there's a school of thought around Bitcoin, for example, being um, it, it it is often equated to digital gold, and we wrote this we wrote this great article on CryptoTutors.com around this this particular point because I wouldn't I would say that if we would have had this conversation maybe five you know ten years ago, Bitcoin is about twelve years old. Um, the the notion of it being or being the notion of it being equated to digital gold would have sounded preposterous, right? And I, I think it would have been considered a myth, but it's not. Uh, I, I don't think it's a myth. Like I, I'm a me personally, outside of crypto traders, me personally am of the school of thought that uh, the like the the comparison to digital gold, um, what makes it such an interesting, um, you know, what some may say myth, I say truth is mm -hmm. that store of value you know there's gold for example is a finite resource you know we, we don't know how much gold interesting enough we don't know how much gold there is because not all the gold has been mined in the world we do know definitively that there's only 21 million units of bitcoin we know that it is a mathematical in, it, impossibility for there to be more bitcoin and we know that about 18 million um uh like units of, of bitcoin have been mined and so they say that it's going to take another 100 years for the, you know, 2 million, 3 million left to, to be mined. But I say that to say, you know, this concept of, of, you know, digital gold, like some may argue that it is a myth, but based on the fact that there's Bitcoin is a finite resource, based on the fact so there's, you know, scarcity, um, based on the fact that <clears throat> even from a utility standpoint, like you're seeing a lot of uh, organizations use Bitcoin as a hedge. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when, you know, the, the, there's turmoil in the market, which is, again, a uh, historically gold has served that purpose. And so I, I kind of want to encourage people to explore for themselves whether or not the um, categorization of Bitcoin being digital gold is a myth or not, because there's store value. And that's something that is worth investigating and gauging uh, if you agree with that notion or not. So I know that I kind of gave you a like a, you know, I sort of flipped the answer. But what I'm trying to do is also provoke people to, to want to learn more and, and do their own investigation and think critically for themselves. Because guess what, this is uncharted terrain. 100%. Um, and what's really interesting, too, is that a lot of investors seem to be super bullish on crypto right now. Um, I think it was like back in December, all of a sudden, a bunch of investors were buying up tons of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin especially. Um, and, uh, and they were doing that rather than keeping cash in the bank. Um, so why is that? And what do you... Um, everyday investors like us have to benefit from investing in crypto. So you'll have to check this out. In September, I think I think I like like if it was like September. Um, you know, I, I I bought some Bitcoin, and the price in September was ten thousand dollars. Okay, the price right now is February four fifth. Is February fifth? Is what thirty eight thousand? Around thirty eight thousand um, or what have you? Yep. That's mind blowing. You've never seen like like to see that level of again volatility, and it went you know um, it was it was great volatility because it was like you know pretty tremendous um, um, growth and, and appreciation, which is amazing. Um, but again, going back to you know what's driving up the price, right? 
So historically, retail investors have been the ones that have been leading the charge around, you know, adopting, embracing crypto. However, in December, there was a turning point. That, that December was a shift because what you started to see was institutional investors. You saw Mass Mutual, I think they put in $100 million. You saw MicroStrategy, and, and I think they put around $50 million. You started to see Grayscale create a Bitcoin fund. So with that level of institutional investment, that was a, a, a validation. There, there was validation associated with that around, you know, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular, not just being, you know, something for like libertarians and like these cyberpunks and what have you. It was starting to be adopted by these, you know, uh, well-regarded, you know, um, and to some extent, you know, like old school institutions. And interestingly enough, and I encourage your, your, your people as well to, to on Twitter, um, you know, you, you want to follow people like Michael Saylor. So, so Michael Saylor has been very outspoken and um, he's the CEO, I believe, of MicroStrategy. And um, MicroStrategy, they actually, Johanna, just had a conference this week catering to institutional investors and educating them on how to invest in, in Bitcoin, particularly Bitcoin. And um, they created an entire playbook where they have outlined for their institutional investors what to do and, and what are the best practices as it relates to making that, crossing that chasm and investing in crypto. So I say that to say, you know, if you're starting to see um, mass adoption, like we're getting to the point of like, you know, critical mass, we're still early on. Um, but another thing is that when you look at the, the returns on investment, right, your savings account, my savings account here in the United States, you're looking at less than 1%, um, less than 1% of interest. And it's mind boggling to think that I'm going to hold my money in an account that's not going to pay me to hold my account there, but yet they're going to, they're going to use my money and to, um, um, you know, use my money to lend my money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. this is the thing about the banking system. This is like the hoax, right? This is why you got to pay attention to how the money works. In when you put your money in um, in a pre, an asset, right, that appreciates triple digits, you have to think twice about why would I stay in a system that pays me less than one percent when I'm getting charged, let's say for your credit cards, 22, 28 percent. Like, don't you want returns like that? Why should the credit card companies, why should your student loan, why should they have all the fun when it comes to interest? No, pay me my money, okay? How right. do you make your money make money for you? All the IG people, we're going in right now. How do you make your money make money for you? Who doesn't want to learn how to make money while they sleep? Well, that's interest. Period. Um, you also brought up a really interesting point about, <laughs> about volatility, right? Um, and I think... That, volatil that volatility tends to be why a lot of people try to skip out on crypto or like are just scared to take the first step and invest. Are there options for people who are risk averse? Um, and are there ways to lower your risk? CriminalSwitters.com, we got an e-learning course about all of that. Um, and I'm not kidding, we really do. So, yeah. so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about that, right? Like I think that, um, First of all, there's over, I think there's 7,800 plus cryptocurrencies right now. You know, you always hear about Bitcoin. You always hear about Ethereum. You always hear about the like, you know, first and second cryptos respectively. However, there are many different asset classes. And what we realized at Crypto Tutors was that, you know, because women statistically um, can be less risk averse, and even you know, people of color can be less risk averse. What we wanted to do was we wanted to um, lower the barrier to entry when it came to investing in crypto by also helping mitigate risk. And that got us thinking about stablecoin, right? Stablecoin, what makes stablecoin, which is a type of cryptocurrency stable, is that it's backed by a, it, it's backed by an asset there's three different asset classes associated with what makes a stable coin stable. One asset class is a fiat currency, which is like a dollar or a euro. Another asset class is um, uh, another crypto. And the third 
I don't remember. But we have it on our blog if you want to check it out. <laughs> um, but I said that to say, uh, again, in the vein of explaining the, the, the mechanics behind why the coin doesn't fluctuate in value, right? So again, if you're somebody who is, you know, risk averse and you're wanting to just dip your toe and kind of get a lay of the land without going hard on, you know, uh, a coin that might make you, you know, lose your lunch because you're like, oh, it just dropped 30%, ah! you know? Um, stable coin could be a great option. And again, right, what we looked at when I spoke about, you know, um, savings accounts earning less than 1%, you know, we'd only, we didn't want to only introduce people to the concept of a stable coin. We wanted to also introduce folks to uh, a stable coin that was paying interest that was anywhere from 10 to 15% APY, which is annual percentage yield. So, you know, it's important to understand these, these terms because what they mean for you is basically making money while you sleep, right? Like, we're not kidding. We, we named our course that for a reason. Like, imagine, you know, you put $1,000 in and over the course of um, a year, you're talking about $1,100. That's 10% of $1,000. So like, for nothing, you know, like you're not, you just have it there. So these are the types of ideas that we want to, to, to provoke. These are the types of strategies that we want to expose people to. Mind you, we are educators, and it's also important to note that, like, we're not uh, financial advisors, you know, we're not, you know, financial gurus. We're just people who are very vigilant in doing an amount of due diligence and R&D that enables us to speak to practices that we've seen success with, and, and, and we want to share that success, and we want to codify those learnings, and so... To answer your question in a kind of long-winded way, but I'm hoping that people are starting to understand why it's so important to do your homework and get in the right community so that these conversations can be had. And again, you you know, the more comfortable you get in having these conversations, less intimidating it will be, but you'll be able to apply what you learn and what you're exposed to in a way that sets you up for financial success. 100%. Um Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna ask my final question, but we want to open it up to the audience. So if you have any questions for Lisa, go ahead and drop that into the Q&A section, or just go ahead and type that in a comment. Um, for those of you who joined after we started, welcome to the first of a four part series that uh, Undertones is doing in partnership with Crypto Tutors. Um, we are going to be talking about all things cryptocurrency every Friday, so make sure to tune in. Um, all right, so... And you'll meet the rest of my team. <laughs> 100%. We're so excited. Um, I got to meet at least one of them, and Nina is incredible, so I'm super excited to meet Maletti um, and the rest of your team. Um, cool. So my final question before we open it up to the audience is with regards to our mission here at undertones um our goal is to help people make equitable decisions. um so we work really hard to make sure that we are also making equitable decisions in our own lives um so with that in mind how do you aim to live equitably I don't think it has to be an either or type of, you know, an either or type of, um, like, I don't look at the world in terms of either or. I look at the world in terms of and. And, you know, I say that because just because you make money or you succeed doesn't mean that, that I can't make money and I can't succeed. It can be an and situation where it's like we and I think collective economics is something that is near and dear to, to my heart. Like, if I'm popping and you're not popping and we ain't popping, then we're not winning. And if we're not winning, I'm not winning. Right. That's awesome. That's it. Like, that's all I got to say. <laughs> you're living equitably by helping other people get their coins. Is Yeah. Like, look, my thing is, how can we... Um, Okay, so, so let, me, let me give you a little bit more meat on the bone when it comes to my response to that. And, and, and that is like, you know, <laughs> I was in tech for many years, right? Like I worked for startups and I worked for Fortune 500s and I sold software to Fortune 500s, Fortune 100s. 
And, you know, I made a lot of money, right? Like stock options, crazy benefits, you know, like, like several, you know, way up into the six figures. And like, I guess by most people's standards, I was, you know, living my best life. Mm -hmm. However, as I said to you before, and I'm using like a personal life experience to hopefully drive the point home. If I'm, if I'm winning and, and we're not, then the system is fundamentally flawed and I'm a part of the problem rather than the solution. So I decided that I am going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to focus on building businesses and, and, and identifying collaborators and partners and, and cultivating a community where the guiding principles revolve around empowerment of the individual, but empowerment of one another and, and, and empowerment of the collective at large. And so there's a quote that says, a rising tide raises all boats. And that's the, the life that I want to live. So when it comes to living equitably, I want to make sure that I'm contributing to your success. I'm contributing to all of our success, which is why we've codified the learning that can have a material impact for generations to come. This is about transgenerational wealth building um, opportunities. And, and that I think is one of the greatest gifts that you can give someone, teaching them how to fish and then they get to have, you know, that impact on their community and families and so forth. And so that's to me when Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, like that's the dream realized. 100%, 100%. And I think that's why like our team was so excited about being able to partner with crypto tutors because we're super aligned in that way. Um, cool, so we are gonna go ahead and open it up to any questions that the audience may have. Um, don't be shy if you have them. We are not mean, we don't bite. Um, so yeah. Maybe. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> Please, is like I keep it spicy. Um, <laughs> hot sauce. Gonna... I got hot sauce in my bag. I am hot sauce. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Um. All right. Well, it looks like there aren't any questions. So, with that being said, thank you all for joining our first session of 2021 of Black History Month of this four-part series with crypto tutors we are super excited to keep this momentum going um and we will talk to you all again soon next time we're gonna unveil our song <laughs> oh my gosh do you want to play it now i do do it <laughs> because come on give it up because let me tell you okay wait before we roll before we have one, right? This is also living equitably, like retaining ownership, you know, like we're producing our own content. We're producing our own music too. And it's a part of our IP. But I say that to say, um, you know, we recognize that people learn in a lot of different ways and through music is a way to, to help people learn. So just play the 15 seconds. Okay, we're just gonna do the 15 second one. <laughs> It's a way. Hey. <laughs> Making money in my scene. Oh, that's it. That's what you're doing. Seconds. All right, fine. We're gonna we're gonna play the rest of it another time. But I'm all glad you all guys hear it. That was an amazing snippet. I'm so glad we got to hear. <laughs> that. She heard crypto tutors making money in my sleep, and she was like, "I like it. <laughs> I don't need to hear more." I no. You, I'm sold. If I if I hadn't already purchased crypto, I I would have started. <laughs> um, you know, we actually got a question in, um, so uh, we could totally answer this before we drop off. If you're cool with that, um, we got a question about whether or not crypto can be part of retirement plans. Any thoughts? So listen to this. This is so fascinating, right? Um, I literally just came across because. <sighs> When I see when I see kind of what's happening in the mark, stock market and with derivatives versus what's happening in crypto, um, I'm I'm realizing that there's a a lot of like upside on the crypto uh, front, and as a result, I started to think about my 401k and just like reclaiming ownership of my 401k, which for years has been sort of I've delegated that responsibility to Fidelity. So I started to think about now that I'm in crypto, how do I redeploy those funds, right? And so I found um, a couple of resources that 
I'm not saying that, you know, you should withdraw your, you know, you know, re to get a self-directed IRA and, and, and put it in this, these funds. But I do want to put that bug in their ear that it is a possibility. And so if that's something that you're considering, I would recommend doing the research. But there are a few organizations that I recently got wind of. Key Keeper IRA is one of them. Mm -hmm. Another is Kingdom Trust. And the third is EQRP. Thank you. And um, I said that to say, again, I'm just starting to learn about what the transition would be and, and what that would entail. But I do think that from a maximizing your 401k, it could be a very interesting um, opportunity to explore in further detail. And those resources that I gave you might be great avenues if that is something that you're considering. Awesome. Thank you for the question, Salt and Peppa. I love that name. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. Thank you for joining. It was wonderful having you all sit in and ask, ask your questions. Um, Lisa, thank you for your time. Um, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Okay. Thank you. You're awesome. It's great Bye. to collaborate. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, love. Seeing you. Bye. <laughs>